Welcome back to part three of Dramatic Time Travel's Romance with Ponies. This is your host, Shag. She around? The voice pierced the black velvet of my coma, hard edges in a southern twang. It felt like I should recognize it. Some days, cover. The voice was less familiar, but a little clearer. My mind began to piece together sensations and categorize them as sounds, smells, pain, and numbness. Oh dear, I hope she wakes up soon. That was Fluttershy, which would make the first voice Applejack. In a snap of clarity, I figured out that I was in the hospital, surrounded by my friends and Nurse Redheart. Hi, every pony, I croaked. I tried to open my eyes and found that one of them was covered by a patch. I took stock of the rest of my body. One of my hooves, the one I had landed on, felt sprained. Other than that, I mostly had bruises and scrapes. They all spoke at once, muddling each other's voices into an incoherent cacophony. Finally, Rarity's voice rose above the rest. Darling, stand back and give the poor mare her space. I don't know why I made Rarity British. With difficulty, I sat up and scanned the room. Rarity and Nurse Redheart were pushing, on an, anxious apple were pushing an anxious Applejack and Rainbow Dash back, while Spike sat on a nearby chair looking guilty. Something was amiss. Where is Pinky? We looked everywhere for her, but she's just gone, Rainbow Dash replied. Ah, uh, that wasn't good. Even worse is I knew it had something to do with me somehow. Well, uh, I'm sure she'll turn up. I'm sure she will, Applejack narrowed her eyes at me. You're lying. That ain't like you, Twy. First, wait. That seems kind of like a jump forward? Hmm. Rainbow Dash and Applejack. Or, wait, nope. For Celestia's sake, why did I ever try to hide anything from Applejack? I... I'm not lying. I'm just not comfortable telling the whole story right now. Rainbow Dash and Applejack both looked like they were going to start into me again, but Rarity prodded them each in the side. We've no need to sink to the level of barbarous interrogation, girls. I'm sure Twilight will tell us what happened in good time. She looked at me pointedly. Won't you? That look was scarier than any bluster Rainbow Dash and Applejack could have come up with. I hung my head. Yes, I will, once things are sorted out. This seemed to placate every pony, and so I stewed over the pinky dilemma silently, as my friend's well wishes dr washed over me comfortingly. They filled me in on the intervening day, but other than my hosp hospitalization and Pinky's disappearance, there was little happening in Ponyville. So eventually the conversation boiled down to pleasant small talk and joking. Fluttershy promised to bring over some vegetables for me. Rainbow Dash and Applejack got into a breath-holding contest for reasons I wasn't able to follow, and Rarity fretted over my sling and pledged to make me a more stylish one as soon as possible. <laughs> well, okay, though. All in all, the pain, already negligible compared to some in injuries I'd sustained, drained away in the pros presence of my friends, even with Pinkie Pie's absence leaving a notable hole in the group. Around sunset, Nurse Redheart came around and informed every pony that visiting hours were only over, and that only Spike, who most likely by Celestia's direct influence was listed as family, was allowed to stay. They said their goodbyes, pledged to come get me the next day when I was discharged, and filed out one by one. Spike had been quiet when the girls were there, happy or so I thought, but not talkative. Now, though, he pulled up a chair close to my bed and sat down, his hands folded in his lap. He looked like he would have been crying if he'd had tear ducts. Oh boy, which of the predictions means that Twilight has cancer now? <sighs> what is it, Spike? Are you okay? Everything you wrote down, everything Pinky predicted, it all happened in order. I figured as much. I shifted position a little, favoring my sprained leg. I had enough bruises and scrapes that it wasn't comfortable to lie in any posture, but there were some tolerable enough to allow me some sleep. I mean, I was conscious for the first four characters, at least. I did this, Twilight. Spike grabbed the hold of his tail, just like he'd used to when, it was, when he was newly hatched. I'd gotten him to stop doing it as frequently, but in times of stress it was a comfort that I was inclined to allow him. I started the whole thing. If I hadn't yawned, I shook my head. If you hadn't yawned, I would have tripped over a lit candle, or a meteor would have hit the tree, or it would have spontaneously combusted. <laughs> Can you do that? Just explode for no reason? This wasn't something you did, Spike. Whatever happened, there's some very serious magic, or physics, or fundamental universal principle that we don't understand at work here. But what about Pinky? 
Now that was a good question. Pinky's tied in with this somehow. I don't think she's behind it. I didn't consciously send that message back in time, so there's no way of knowing where it came from. I think she was just being used as a medium. In a way, so are you. Spike brightened a bit. Well, it looks like we've got a mystery to solve. More than one, but either way, it's got to wait until the morning. You need your sleep, and I need to heal. Okay, Twilight. Spike rolled over on the chair. Mind if I sleep here? I'll try my best not to burn you again. I picked him up with my magic and set him down next to me on the bed. You can sleep next to me if you want. He immediately curled up in a hollow on the sheets. Thanks, Twy. Sleeps well, Spike. You too. <gasps> Aww, isn't that adorable? <clears throat> he slept, but I didn't. I had, after all, just woken up from something resembling sleep. The shadows shifted in the moon as Luna's moon tracked the sky. Yay, Luna! I wondered if Luna had noticed that my library light, frequently the only artificial illumination in Ponyville in the small hours of the morning, wasn't lit tonight. Hmm, I wonder how observant Luna really is about that thing. Maybe she gets mad when people don't conserve energy. <clears throat> Around midnight, something stirred at the door of the room. Hello? I called softly to avoid waking Spike. Nurse Redheart? A pony came into the room, but it wasn't the nurse. I had to turn my head awkwardly to see her out of my one good good eye. She was a pale, washed-out pink, with long, straight hair. This was the bedraggled, confused mare that Rainbow Dash had dragged into Pinky's birthday party, the joyless element of laughter. Twilight, she whispered. Even her voice sounded grayer. Pinky! Spike stirred a bit, and I lowered my voice. Are you all right? I'm all right. I'm always all right. Pinky the indestructible. <laughs> Everything bounces off the rubber pony. Nothing sticks. Except if it's stuck to you all over you, deep in the wounds and the bruises. What are you talking about? It's luck. Bad luck. Like I'm a black cat with 13 legs made out of broken mirrors walking under a ladder. If I hadn't twitchy twitched out that sentence... I sighed. First Spike, now Pinky. Pinky, you didn't do this. There's no such thing as luck. Pinky approached me, close enough for me to see her eyes. The tears in them shone in the dull light, and they narrowed at me. Just like there's no such thing as Pinky sense? My heart clenched. H hey, that's not fair. That was an observable phenomenon that I was just ignoring. This was a specific series of events that you can't explain by some catch-all name like luck. It doesn't matter what you call it, White Light. You got hurt, and bouncy Pinky bounced away just fine. Now I'm bouncing out of your life. I'm sorry I was so selfish to think we could be together, but it always takes me just a little too long to know when I'm only thinking myself. She turned and headed for the exit. Pinky, wait! She turned back to me and paused briefly, saying nothing. But as soon as I saw the, uh, those azure eyes again, I couldn't think of anything to say. There I was, a pony who spent her life among books, finding a shortage of words. I didn't know if Pinky was out of earshot or not when I started crying. I sobbed, and I couldn't think of anything else to do. Spike woke up and wordlessly nestled closer to me, unquestioningly supportive as always, trying to hold me together as my world fell apart. And thus Pinky did disappear.